What's up everybody? I'm gonna make a video, probably like five, 10 minutes roughly. Uh, don't make it like too obvious, but I'm just kinda like, do a little bit educating for people who are not understanding about spring rates and spring heights and stuff like that. So let me get it started and show what I'm uh, talking about. All right, now you can see I have my PC uh, racing coilovers off, um, just for the front on my 2020 Civic uh, hatchback. I did some of the math calculation formulas just to get me started with this and to show you why am I doing this. And naturally, you can still use this for daily is um, rough roads. It's kind of harsh because you're adding more pressure in the springs naturally for a 160 uh, millimeters versus 180. And you can tell just by the right uh, the height of the spring. And it's still going to be 8K and for, uh, for the fronts. I did swap out to my original spring for, uh, it was a 10K for 160. So I upgraded, uh, a downgrade technically for more street use uh, for 8K, but now a lot higher uh, spring rate. Why I say it's a lot more spring rate compared to 8K, let me show you a little math on this. Naturally, you want to see is the, the spring rate. This is the front, the rear, the passenger side and, and the driver side um, for American uh, American version. Um, this is the weight of my uh, vehicle right now for the driver side of 854 pounds and the passenger side. Um, I balance it out by adding, uh, I add these two and divide uh, divided by two and got a sum of 800 and 62 pounds compared to, I'm not worrying about the rears right now because my rears are going to be a 10k and I will probably do adjustment maybe a 8k later on but this is basically just for the front just to get you understanding all right now why I did a sum is that you kind of need to do because they don't uh it don't ever out what type of uh, spring on each corner for fat manufacturer use for especially OEM to uh, aftermarket. So you have to have to give like a, just a sum of an AK or 448 uh, pounds per inch uh, spring, but there's a lot to play for it, especially you know, with manufacturers and aftermarket companies to get the right uh, ride height, ride spring uh, height and spring load for block, uh, block height. So to get you understand, um, I do have a, 8K, a 7K spring here, just a reference of a 60. I was gonna use this for my Honda Fit, but right now, I'm not right now. So um, for 8K, for it's basically gonna be a 448, um, is actually the spring, uh, actually the, the thickness, thickness of the, the wire. On the coil rod wire. Um, now you want to talk about the height and everything. It's going to be a lot, a lot different. Now for 180, it's going to be a seven inch spring compared to a 160. It's going to be 6.299 spring. And why I'm going to to downgrade the uh, upgrade a, a, a taller spring because I need more a spring uh, a block load and when i'm talking about block load is naturally when the spring is fully compressed to the max there's no spring left to give that's called uh, spring block height and it's basically you're basically making like a brick kind of thing it's solid and when it's not it's just a free throw static as this was shown so and how you can uh give estimates on this you basically have to do the measure the thickness of the the wire uh, the coil wire and how many uh, actually coils there is. There's seven on this one uh, 180. So I took the seven and I I basically did a lot of math to it. So it's a lot of involvement. Uh, you basically have to get understand to online uh, to break it down for um, you might have like suspension books. You can actually help you. But uh, the reference for this uh, 180, uh, the 180 is going to be uh, a total for the, is uh, 1,742.899 pounds total of that spring. For the 160 spring is 
uh, 5, 594.66 pounds for the total spring for compressed. Um, and you you probably want to know like why I need to need know that know so much, but especially if you're doing some customizing for your own ride and everything, um, the manufacturer wants you to have the right spring rate, uh, spring height naturally for the car already. And if you're doing some customizing for lowering the car just for static, uh, hell flush kind of deal, and you're not really driving very much, and you want to lowest you can, they're gonna they're going to ask you questions like, are you going to want this like super low for like static ride? And they're going to probably give you like a, like a 160 instead of 180. So you have more low capacity to drop it much as you can, but you can't really go anywhere. But I'm using it for daily use and some uh, uh, road racing here and there if I have to. So I have more spring travel to give. So just in case that's especially when you're um, coming to a corner and you're loading the front up a lot and you're basically compressing the wheel into the window wheel um, you're adding more uh, weight load from your body sh body weight shifting towards the front so naturally it's not going to be like this it's going to be like 500 750 pounds more compressed so that's why you need more load on the spring while it's high height or you can upgrade your spring to a, a 9k 10k 12k it just varies varies on the how the car handles how the car responds on uh upshift downshift kind of uh come to a corner like you're at a snake and you're or a hard pin cornering at an apex so basically for the difference between the the 160 and 180 it's a total difference of 140 pounds of uh, more than 160 so that gives you the sum how much load actually can do for this uh ride and it's all static for this ride it's not a dynamic and you're at dynamic it basically you can't really you have to use like weight scales and proper angle of the load on each corner from uh, right to left rear kind of thing. But now I'm gonna add my body weight and I'm roughly about 160 pounds. So I give it a sum of 1,023 uh, pounds for each corner of the car, of the front. So, and this is the for the 160, I'm sorry, it's a little scribble. So it's 1,594 pounds versus the, the 180. Uh, spring uh, 1,742 and I put my weight on that. This is how much is uh, left that needs to be compressed to be a uh, block a uh, height compressed of the spring or of the load. And you can see there's a big difference and that gives me a sum that I, I got a lot to give. So just in case this doesn't uh, compress all the way and tap out into the, the body of the shock. You don't want that to happen. You don't want to have it too short that it will bottom out right here. Um, so, and these colors can only do so much for you uh, for adjustments. So, the height is required, especially how much the car weighs on each corner. We always need uh, uh, the proper ride height while we're at the track. People will upgrade the springs or downgrade the springs from front to rear, the front to rear. So, uh, uh, weight uh, balance and everything you just get the ride with the England. especially you needed to know what camber and caster positions you are required for the track that you're using it could be changing through a certain type of the hairpins that it needs to be more camber and usually you have to understand that how much camber there is and or how much load of that rear the front that front spring is putting down on is how much uh, load it's going to travel in, giving you more spring pressure in there. So uh, that's it's not always a good thing, especially when you're in the corner and uh, it can basically oversteer or understeer. It just varies on uh, what the car of your setup is, especially with aerodynamics. Aerodynamics is a big key on the tube, but there's another um, formula you have to understand on that, uh, how much coefficient drag you have to use and how much the area volume of 
splitter they're going to be using, uh, especially the front and the rear. And it varies, can be up to 50 pounds to over a thousand pounds, and especially like William Young's uh, Civic uh, Time Attack car. And I think his spring loads over 2,000 pounds. So just that's for the front each corner. The rear is just probably a little bit more, a little bit more that I remember, because um, the rear wing is a lot too. So just give you guys an uh, idea what to look for when you're trying to upgrade your springs. Um, uh, BC Racing basically uh, is um, asking you questions, what type of car you're using, what spring rate you wanna use, and they'll give you the right the spring height already for that car, just to give you the proper and warranty for it of that spring setup. So thank you for watching and please please subscribe.